There we go. All right. Hi, right, welcome. Today we're doing the Zodiac and the Eightfold Path. We're up to 10th tenth, tenth level on Rasa 8. 10th tenth, tenth class on Rasa 8 level. Okay, so now we're jumping into deeper factors within the Zodiac. And I'm just going to try and make this a bit bigger on the screen. Let's yeah, open a little bit more here. Okay, good. Now, okay, so I have to just bring it down. So here we go. So we're just starting with our basic zodiac considerations. One second. This one. And down. Okay. So we have our basic categories. Daylight is increasing. Darkness is increasing. These are the two first and primary factors in understanding the zodiac. Half of the year from the winter solstice till the, solstice till the summer solstice, the daylight is increasing. That takes us through winter as the daylight increases up to springtime and through springtime up to the longest day. And in the whole time that daylight increases, anyone born then or those signs of the zodiac carry the energy of increasing activity. As light increases, there's more activity. It's hotter, it gets warmer, there's more action, there's more, in, and as there's more action, there's more independence. One's doing one's own thing more and more. So that was the basic idea of the daylight increasing. The darkness increasing half is the beginning of the night increasing as, as the darkness increases, the light decreases, and it's harder and harder to do one's own thing. It becomes more important to do things with others, in context to others, in reaction to others, in participating with the others. So we have the creative, individual, active time, and we have the um, receptive, collective understanding, responsibility. To be part of a team, it takes more responsibility. So we have freedom building up in the daylight increasing, responsibility in the nighttime increasing. And um, really, it's our sensitivity. One half is our attitude to doing our own thing. The other half is the attitude to belonging. And when you're born with your son on one side or the other, you're gonna, it's going to be important for you to be doing it. If daylight's increasing, it's going to be important for you to be pushing your own thing more. If nighttime is increasing, you're still going to push your thing, but you're going to push it for others, with others, in reaction to others. It won't be just you by yourself. It's not so much you by yourself. You might be sensitive. It might be a complex if you're just by yourself and you're not belonging. There's a sort of movement towards belonging or being in context to others. Whereas with the daylight increasing, there's movement out of that context to doing one's own thing. Don't tell me I can't do this. So this is our primary um, insight. And it's something that's not in most of the astrology books, but it should be because the cardinal, the fixed medieval fire, where our earth are all affected by whether it's moving towards the daylight or towards it, whether the daylight's increasing or the darkness is increasing. They're all colored by it. They're all tertiary factors that get added inside of this. So the... Um, Okay, then we divide the half of the, the year the other way from March, from the spring equinox over to the fall equinox. And half of the year, daylight is greater, and half the year, darkness is greater. So that was their second division. And it showed the half where the in, independent and doing his own things. See, the daylight increasing is moving towards more freedom, doing, trying to stress to do something for oneself more, or to participating more, the nighttime increasing. Here, it's blatantly, I'm doing my own thing. Daylight is greater, and the nighttime is we're part of the team where there's the social receptivity is strong there, and where you fit in, where you belong, and the responsibilities. You can have a positive or negative relationship to it, but it was our second category. And when we put these two together, we have we see the daylight increasing, darkness increasing, darkness is greater, daylight is greater. You end up with this. Um, more than two dimensional, it just adds this, you see these two levels coming together. And it's drawn out a little bit better in other way, ways, but this is, we see it. So here, the day, dry, daily increasing, darkness increasing in the center. The outside daily is greater, nighttime is greater on the outside of the circle. Then it's divided, divided by the equinoxes and the solstices. 
and it divides into the four seasons. So each season is determined by these two categories, whether daylight's increasing and whether it's greater or less. So daylight increasing, winter, daylight is increasing, but darkness is greater. So we're trying to be more free. Individuals are trying to get them more free, but in context to others, in context with the group is I gotta get out of here. And this is, it's not blatantly free. When it gets to springtime, you're doing your own thing. Daylight's increasing, daylight's greater. And you're doing your own thing and you want to do more, don't slow me down. I'm on a roll. It's bowing. Okay. So when you're on this daylight increasing side, usually relationships have to add to you and, and reinforce you for what you do. Like if a relationship comes in, it's gotta be adding to you or noticing you and what you're doing is the predominant factor. It's your manner of relating. And then that just is increasing the need to to share, be sensitive to others, and be in context together, it becomes more important than doing one's own thing. There can be conflicts come out of this and struggles that try to be the opposite of it. Um, and then there's a complex within that. Um, but this is the standard that gets set. So we get our four seasons. Now, inside of this, we're starting, I'm starting to use the I Ching, or the, the I Ching, which takes solid lines for light and broken lines for darkness. And it makes it a cleaner wheel, but it's a symbol. It's a symbol. You look at it, you see these symbols. But really, the first line on the inside is the daylight increasing in each quarter. So light, light is increasing. Spring, light is increasing. Summer, the broken line, the darkness is increasing. Summer, autumn, the broken line, the darkness is increasing. Okay, so the first line on the inside is whether daylight is increasing or nighttime is increasing. The second line is if daylight is greater or nighttime is greater. So you see in autumn and in fall and winter, there's a broken line on the outside. So that's the darkness is greater. And then in the spring and summer, the outer line is solid, which is mean brighter. It's daylight is, daylight is greater. Duh. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I just forgot it. Okay. Now, so when you look at these, the daily increase in darkness is greater. The words are there, the seasons are there, describes the seasons. These are, pri these are primary insight, insights into behavior and into understanding. Before you get to cardinal fixed middle, before you get fire, water, earth, before you get to anything else, masculine, feminine, this is the primary stuff, basic behavior. You gotta see this. Well, you don't have to. People work with the chart without knowing these things and it still can be valid, but it's not gonna be as clear or as lucid or as insightful. When we did, and this is one of the main prior, priorities of in uh, priorities of rasa in every cycle. There's a light increasing and a darkness increasing side, a light half and a dark side, and then the interpretation starts from there. It's the phases more than the specific things or the specific aspects or specific moments. The phases are all part of phases. So now, okay, so this comes up in here. We've just, I just have the, the four seasons written in with the lines with that and the names without, just we have, we know this is daylight increasing and darkness is greater. And we can see the four distinct different symbols. For, from, this is from the chain. This is what we're building up to the four distinct um, symbols of four phases, four seasons. Now, what happens in the inside here, you see the four phases, the four seasons. Each, there's another line that gets added. Each line, each phase divides in half. So there's, the winter has, a, has two sides to it. The first half and the second half. Same with spring, same with summer. And they're very distinct. They have different behaviors. So if you're thinking, for, it used to be the zodiac was eight. There wasn't eight zodiacs, not 12. And then there was just cardinal and mutable. There wasn't fixed. The fixed was kind of a mixture of the two, but there was cardinal and mutable. So you can see this division and how it happens is on the inside of these three line figures for the winter, the first line is solid and the second line is broken. Daylight is increasing, darkness is greater. And then you see the broken dark and the solid light, the, the dark half and the light half of winter. Then you see the solid and solid of spring, solid line, solid line, and solid side line, but then there's a broken line on the outside and a solid line. So there's the dark half of spring and the light half of spring. 
big dis- there is really noticeable distinctions with this as you get to watch it. It takes time. It, it, it settles in. Then as you get the summer when the nighttime is increasing, broken line, then the solid line for night daylight is greater. Then there's a light half and a dark half to summer. And the same with the fall. It's broken, broken, then solid, the light half of, of the fall, and broken, 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 the dark half of the fall. So this is the, the these eight, these are the eight phases of the moon. These are the eight phases of the seasons, or the eight, yeah, the eight phases of the seasons. Um, the, okay, let's just go on. This is a better drawing of it. We see the light half and the dark half of each season. So really distinct. I just gotta look forward for this. See what the next line is. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do it from here. So this is really a distinct thing. We can see uh, how will you see it? But oh, in reading it, you can you now know when you see these totems, these each chain totems. You read from the bottom up. They let increasing night times increasing later dark half of the season. Okay, the first two lines give you the season. The next line gives you the later dark half. And when you see the later dark half, when there was the eightfold zodiac, it was just this. When you add the the fixed sign in, the fixed signs are half light and half half the dark half and half the light half. It's where the two meet. So if you want to if you want to see this clearly, you take the fixed signs of the zodiac and you look at the first 15 degrees and the last 15 degrees. People born in the first half of Aquarius are in the dark half of winter. People born in the last half of Aquarius are in the light half. So the people born in the dark half, they're a little bit more cardinal and pushy. They're a little bit more sat and ruled, whereas the people born in the, in the last half of Aquarius will be more readable, a little more adaptable, have a little bit of the, they're moving towards the, um, the they should include the Pisces to have that mutable side. So, Look at if you're looking for rigidity, you see the first half of Aquarius. You're looking for a little bit of adaptability. That's going to be more in the second half of Aquarius. The same happens with Taurus in springtime. The first half of Taurus, first 15 degrees, would be more driving and pushing, more impulsive, more cardinal. The last half would be more adaptable. So the same with Leo. The first half of Leo is going to be a little bit more cardinal, more driving to get attention, more driving. We're not driving to be best, right? And the, the second half is a little bit more ad- adaptable, a little bit more mutable. Same with Scorpio. The first half of more Scorpio of Scorpio is a little more pushing, is a little bit driving, pushing, and the second half is a little more, more judgmental and reactive. They're both judgmental, but it's just that difference. This becomes clearer when you put it to the signs and the rulers, and when you put it to the the trigram. So this is our basic starting point of how the trigrams and the each ring begins to fit into the zodiac. So from here, I want to take a bit of time to go over and interpret the, um, the trigrams and see how they get how they get the meanings out of the trigrams. Because there's a whole, as you're going into the, the, the trigrams, there's a whole other language, a whole, I mean, for 5,000 years, the Chinese have studied the trigrams and it's done a little bit more mathematically, but there's a logic. Some of the wisest beings on the planet that ever been on the planet have studied it and related to it, made comments of it. And this material has been passed on for 5,000 years, at least probably double or triple that. So, okay. 